I started bucket list in high school and um, one of the things on the bucket list was to drive a race car uh, because I'd always loved speed. I was always getting in trouble for speeding. I got in the race car and I just, I fell in love and I was the fastest car on the track that day at the racing school. And then there was a race team owner that kind of came over and encouraged me to chase it. By 2001, I found my first sponsor. Had a lot of no's, had a lot of doors slam in my face. Being a girl right off the bat, you're sort of the odd one out in the garage, and I wanted to be accepted, and here I had come to North Carolina from California, and I was vegetarian and now vegan, and at some point I just realized, you know what, I'm, I'm never gonna fit in. I don't, I don't know why I'm even trying to fit in. Like, it's, I should just be myself. And so I started becoming vocal on my racing website about environmental issues. This is in 2006. An Inconvenient Truth had just come out in theaters, and I had seen it, and I put it on my website. Well, I found somebody that was throwing me under the bus saying, this race car driver's an idiot, she's promoting an Inconvenient Truth on her website. And then all these other people were chiming in to agree with them. Eventually somebody said, well, have you actually seen the movie? Because it's a little weird for you to be throwing this race car driver under the bus for a film that you haven't actually seen. And so the conversation then shifted and wasn't about me anymore, and it was now about climate change and global warming, and whether it was real or it was not real. By the end of the thread, people were actually posting graphs of the parts per million of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere on a NASCAR forum, a forum that was previously used really to just discuss racing. And that was the moment where sort of the hair stood up on the back of my neck, and I realized now it makes sense why as a biology graduate I dropped everything and moved to North Carolina to become a race car driver. It seemed like such a crazy move. At that moment I realized that I could be a bridge between the race fans and the environmental community and talk about these things and get the two sides talking to each other. And then 100% laser focus, that became my main goal. When I ran the Daytona car, the vegan powered car at Daytona, it was the first vegan themed race car in the world. To hear the track announcers talking about vegan food on Fox Sports to millions of race fans, it was just surreal to me. I, I just couldn't believe it. And I thought that would be the first and only time that I would get to run the vegan car. And then the sponsors came back and wanted to do more races, so I've got both a well-fed world on board with me, and I've also got Compassion Over Killing, and we've got TryVeg.com on the, the deck lid of the race car behind me. And then with the vegan car, we're actually giving away free vegan food at the racetrack. So last year, we did Gardein chicken wings, and we did the Fall Your Heart Ranch dressing, and then this year we're doing the Impossible Burger. I've got Jason Stefanko making these amazing Impossible Burgers that we've been giving to the race fans. And I think we've given away, just at the first two races, over 16,000 uh, vegan Impossible Burgers. And I even had a couple of fans come up to me and told me that they went vegan since coming through my tent last year. So it's really being embraced by the race fans. They really understand the health side of it. So many people in this country, including race fans, are struggling with heart disease and diabetes and obesity. So when we're telling them, you know, look, this, this has no cholesterol in it. This has all the protein that you would get in a normal burger, but it has zero cholesterol. That kind of thing is really powerful for people that are struggling with those issues. And we've got some video of the race fans, you know, that are maybe skeptical at first. They think I'm going to give them something that tastes horrible. And then they take their first bite and you just see their whole face 
like in disbelief, they can't believe that it's completely plant-based. A lot of people who are not vegan just don't understand that they can have all the flavor and all the foods that they've ever craved in vegan form. There's vegan pizza, there's vegan macaroni and cheese, there's vegan ice cream, there's vegan burritos, there's vegan sausages, there's vegan anything that you want. When every decision that you make is based on a set of ethics, you can sleep better at night. And with 7.6 billion people on the planet and a growth rate of like 1.4 million people every four days, it can feel like, oh, I'm just one person. And so I think we have to start thinking in a different way where we're looking at our impact as, okay, if I make this decision to get like an electric lawnmower or an electric car, my neighbor might see it and that will plant a seed and maybe they will make their next car electric or their next lawnmower electric, or maybe they'll put up solar panels on their roof. And so by living your ethics, you are setting an example to everybody around you. I look at this generation as being the one that has been called upon to answer the most noblest of duties, which is to ensure the survival of future generations with the most basic of survival mechanisms, adaptation. And one of those adaptations is moving towards a plant-based diet.